So in this video, I'm going to do a rendering of a flower using a Noodler's FlexNib fountain pen. Um, I did another drawing with a fountain pen, but it didn't have a FlexNib. This one does, and um, fountain pens are pretty much like dip pens, but as I said, you know they have a reservoir of ink, so it's pretty cool. You don't have to keep dipping, but you still have the advantage of um, dip pens in that you're able to create nice line variation. Um, now, uh, I chose this flower, Sadalia, because it gives you a good practice in um, a good amount of practice in creating different types of lines, and also in how to render the petals by varying the line width and that's what I'm going to be exercising here so the thing is with this is that not only um, am I going to vary the value with each petal but across the flower as well it's a beautiful image that I found and I figured that it would be a really good example and showing you how to do that so um, before I actually start this I'll give you some tips on how to use this now fountain pens are really cool to use Unlike most of the drawing pens that you see me use most of the times, um, see, there are advantages and disadvantages to all the different materials or drawing instruments that you may use. See, like with, for example, like with these, you know, technical drawing pens in general, you'll find that they create very consistent lines. See, the line width is consistent. And they're also very clean. You know, there's no mess, there's no smudge and so on. Um, so to create different variation in line width, you don't have that much option. I can press on this and then lighten. See, so I can I do have some line variation with this based on the amount of pressure that I apply. See, but the thing is, they're really made primarily to give you a consistent line throughout, um, which is a superb advantage, especially if you just want to just draw without having to think about, um, you know, uh, varying your lines. The, see, the thing is, though, I have to use different um, nib sizes in order to create different line widths. If I want a really light line, I'll use a smaller um, point. Okay, but nonetheless, you know, they're they're really good for creating details and 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 working consistently. Right now with uh, fountain pens, especially with the flex nib fountain pens, the cool thing is that you're able to do this. Hmm. There you go. See, I was railroading there a little bit. You're able to create nice line width variation, you know, um, which is pretty cool. So with this, you can go from, you can use, actually make really small lines, lines that are really thin, as well as you can create lines that are really bold, you see? And it, it really can make drawings be really dynamic. So the thing is with this, you know, I can use one pen to create um, what the three of these would do, all right? Um, and of course the, the ink flows really well so I'm just going to be giving you an exercise on how to basically use this one pen to create lines that have varying um, width or weight alright yeah so what I'll be doing with rendering this is that I'll, I'll pretty much be rendering each petal in the same way and you'll see it and, and, and the thing is I'm picturing or you know in my mind I'm thinking of the petals because the the petal that you'll find here are pretty much just like this. Well, I, I'm going to start from um, a general simple shape and then I'll show you how I, what goes on in my mind in terms of how I picture it. So imagine you have like a, a cylinder like that. All right. Now imagine that that cylinder is, is actually not close, but like a, a piece of a rectangular piece of thing fold it over so now it, it looks like like this you see what I mean it's this you fold over like that I'm just showing you how I picture these things and how it enables me to render them so now imagine this being like sliced open 
like right here. So now it looks something like like this. See what I mean? In other words, this is the opening back there. So it's like you sliced out a part of it. Now, in here, it's going to be dark because light can't, you know, we're assuming that light won't be able to get in there. So these lines are indicating, describing the shape, and it's also describing the um, light and shadow. So I see it creates a sense of depth. And that's how I think of these things. Now, of course, it won't be as geometric as this, it will be a little bit more organic so it may look something like this see what I mean but that's basically the approach you'll see me use so deep in here and as it comes out to the light it gets just like that that's the thinking I have in my mind okay so when you see me render certain things this is what I'm doing over and over trust me all right, so, um, all right, so as I said, what's going to be happening is uh, with each pedal is going to have this type of a value pattern where it is, it's, it's deep in shadow and the, where it attaches, where each pedal attaches to the main core of the flower. And then also, I'm going to be assuming that there's like a, a gradual um, wash of light, okay, that's coming from the upper right to the lower left where the shadow is. So the petals will overall get darker or lighter towards the light and darker towards the shadow. And you'll see that overall movement of light and shade as well as the individual um, light and shade pattern of each petal, all right? So it's a fun exercise. Now I'd advise you to do something like this. And again, drawing flowers is really good practice for pen and ink because it enables you to learn to be very economical with your strokes because you can easily over-render flowers. As delicate as they look, they also require a delicate approach in rendering, okay? It's, it's good to take your time and not overdo it less is more okay keep it very simple um all right so uh let's have some fun with this some ideas on this so um, you can see how I pretty much varied so you can you can definitely tell that light or I'd hope that you'd be able to tell that light is coming from this side or that's the impression I want to convey 
light is coming from this side and this side is in shadow so you know there's a different treatment even though each of the petals are treated with just about the same pattern of strokes as you see here overall you see that there's a, a heavier treatment over here as compared to over here and I tried to make it gradually shift and I think I was able to accomplish that and as I said you know drawing flowers especially with pen and ink is really 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 good practice because it teaches you how to use little or to um, apply the less is more principle where you know less pressure is um, needed with petals that are in, in lighter areas and uh, you use deeper deeper lines more layered um, more compact when it's in the shadow area and you really have to allow the the lines to really capture the the fragility or the 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 movement if you will of the petals all right you know you don't want it to seem as if it's just still okay and that's a cool thing with pen and ink that enables you to do that so um hopefully you guys got some uh ideas and you can apply this to your own drawing